He's got a real important job. He is the president of the NFL Players Association, J.C. Treader, and also the starting center of the Cleveland Browns. Browns scheduled to open the season in Baltimore on September 13th, and J.C., kind enough to uh, join us. Where do we stand here? What, what questions are left to be answered from the side of the NFL Players Association? Yeah, there's still quite a few. We obviously made some strides early in the week on some of the safety issues. Um, those, I don't really even consider union wins at this point. Those are just the right thing to do by the NFL. And we've been we've been fighting to to get the NFL to look at this thing, understanding that football has to look different. There's no way to to foot uh, or fit coronavirus inside of football. You have to find a way to fit football inside of coronavirus. Um, you know, things like daily testing. Uh, things like no preseason games were things that had to be done in order to try to not just start a season, but finish a season. So there's still a lot of, a lot of work left to be done. Uh, a lot of questions left to be answered. But you go back to Sunday and it felt like a, an orchestrated Twitter uh, salvo being fired by some of the marquee players to uh, the NFL. Did you organize that? Uh, that was that was player led, and and that's the the thing about a union. The the players are the union. So was it union led? Yeah, the okay. players the players organized it. Um, and, and I think that just shows that the players are very concerned about health and safety, very concerned about the health and safety of their families, uh, and they want these questions answered. And uh, we've been working on this for for months, uh, and and it seems like it's taking forever. And and we continue to press the NFL to provide us the answers that our guys want. Uh, and some of those issues are still outstanding. We went from, what, four preseason, three preseason, then two, one, zero. Pretty quickly there. Um, why don't the players want at least one preseason game? So there, there's two issues. One's the, the COVID side of it, where if you're creating these safe bubbles at your facilities, what's the benefit to playing a game, mixing two groups, risking an outbreak for a game that doesn't count in the standings, and in doing so could derail the entire season if something happens. Second, the football side of it, and something we're still fighting for, is the proper acclimation period uh, as well as ramp up. Uh, and the more preseason games in the schedule, the shorter that ramp up can be. And what we learned from the lockout season where gyms were closed, we had guys who didn't go through a normal offseason program, we had a huge spike in soft tissue injuries. A uh, 25% increase overall, 44% increase in hamstrings, twice as many Achilles injuries. Uh, so we have that data from before, understanding that we didn't do the proper ramp up 10 years ago. Uh, and now it's it's necessary to do the proper ramp up to make sure we take guys from where they're at right now to game speed without rushing them back and having a mass, mass injury event during but, training camp. But you have a new head coach and Kevin Stefanski just trying to get acclimated to being on the field, have communications up top. And with your quarterback, how do you try to have some kind of semblance of a game or situational football where he's able to do that without it just being the first game of the regular season? Yeah, I, I, I trust uh, I trust the coaches to be able to figure out how to put us in those positions in practice and put us in in situations that we can mimic live game reps, uh, mimic those situations, and and get ready for the game. And uh, I, I think that's that's possible without preseason games. And, you know, how many, if, if we were to play one preseason game backed up to the regular season, how many of the starters who you're talking about getting ready would have played in that game risking injury anyway? It just overall just didn't make sense to slide one in at the end because I don't think it would have done it would have did what it was supposed to do. What about inner squad games? Do you see that happening? Well, you mean uh, between two teams or yeah. just between one team? If you did two teams, could you, could you see that yeah. happening? That was the joint practice, and, and that was a, uh, a recommendation from our joint subcommittee uh, that, again, just like the combining of bubbles during the preseason games, you didn't want to fly a group out to another city, have them live in a hotel for, for four days in a non-bubbled you know, environment, and have that risk of an outbreak. And, and that's the thing we've continued to preach is we can, we can easily get started. It's about staying started and, and continuing a season, uh, and you can't make decisions to try to you know, prioritize the football aspect of it and in doing so derail the entire season. But you still remain confident that you're going to start on time? Well, the NFL is allowed to open up the facilities. That's, that's in there, right? It's our job as a union to protect our players and try to create and demand the safest workplace possible. So uh, the NFL and the clubs are going to start bringing players back, all players back in the next week. Uh, we have 
uh, things in place to monitor them and make sure they're taking everything we're, we're putting into place seriously. And if they don't, then we'll have actions that we'll take to make sure we keep our guys safe. Uh, and, and as guys report, we'll, we'll continue to monitor that and make sure everything's going well. But where things stand today, though, JC, are the players expected to report? If, if the team uh, – players have contracts. So if the team tells you to come back on the 28th as long as it fits within the CBA, uh, you – go back. Uh, that, those are the rules. And that's why the union's pushing so hard for protections to make sure these, these locker rooms, these facilities are put in a place and, and up to code uh, that guys aren't being at risk by being at the facility. So that's what we continue to fight for, uh, continue to demand uh, and push the NFL to make sure these are as safe as uh, environments as possible. If the facility was open today, would you show up? Uh, me, no. I don't have to be there till the 28th. No, but so, if, it, if it was open, let's say if today was reporting day. Would you be there? Uh, if today was the 28th, I would be there because okay. I'm contractually obligated to be there. Okay. Uh, the Antonio, uh, Antonio Brown situation, uh, where does the NFL Players Association, what's the role with them? Because he said he was going to retire. Now he says he wants the NFL to wrap up their investigation so he can play again. What role does the Players Association play in a player? Is Antonio Brown still a member of the union? Uh, I believe... I mean, if he's retired, he would be a non-active player. I don't I'm not think sure. he's retired. I think he's. Yeah, I'm not sure he filed the paperwork or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, I'll have to look into that. I didn't see that that report whenever that came out about him retiring and unretiring. So I'll have to look into kind of what we can do uh, to help wrap up that situation. Uh, but I'll have to get back to you on that. Yeah, I'm wondering about that. That the commissioner doesn't look at this and go, "Boy, it's Antonio Brown. Let me wrap this up. He's got to treat everybody the same." But it feels like it's just been kind of hanging out there. And that's why I was curious what the role of the, you know, here you are the president of the NFL Players Association. And if you even get involved in something like that, or is it management that gets involved in this? Uh, well, that'd be more probably a lawyer okay. uh, for us than, than me. I, I think Antonio would probably rather have the lawyer. Uh, defend. <laughs> <laughs> is, so. is this your home? Yeah. It's kind of sparse there. I got. I don't have any curtains. Like, what's there's. We, no... We've got we've got the, the pull down uh, shades, uh, blackout shades. So they're they're up high. Okay. Um, minimalist. That that's what we went for. <laughs> Where's the paintings or or, or posters uh, or something? We got two, two paintings over there. Some books. Uh, a very very uh, a white white out environment. <laughs> Do you have a weight room there? Uh, uh, I've got one down in the basement. Oh, okay. Uh, by the way, uh, but we had you on June 16th, and you and McLovin had a bet based off Cornell Dartmouth. Now that game has moved to the spring, I guess. So maybe you could attend. I heard the sigh of relief when that announcement came out from McLovin. From, <laughs> I, I, I heard that out loud when he when he got that news that he he wouldn't have to face the the wrath of Cornell. Yes, McLovin. Well, it, that's typical Cornell. Get an extension because you know you're not going to do well on a paper. That's something JC knows really well. Wow. About. Wow. Any response there, JC? I mean, if, if they are going to play in the spring, I think I will have to make an appearance. I, I think that's the only way to do it. McLovin? Yeah, as long as I don't have to go to Ithaca in the spring. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is there a good time to go to Ithaca, McLovin? That's JC. I haven't been there. <laughs> There's about a month and a half. Window. You get right. uh, it's, the, it's the perfect weather. Huh. Uh, hey, great to talk to you again. My best to your father, who I uh, know uh, watches the show. And uh, hopefully we got football starting here coming up soon. But thank you again, JC. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Uh, that's JC Treader. He's the uh, head of the NFL Players Association. He's the president in the Cleveland Browns Center. 